What's up? What's up? What is up? And welcome to the Dr. Ali Griffith Show, Mindset, Meditation, and Motivation. We are in for a special treat today. Stay tuned. You're about to learn. You, you're going to get the inside scoop to a private conversation that I have with someone pretty much almost every week or every other week. And we're going to, and it's all going to revolve around our brand and how it is that we've evolved into where we are. So stay tuned and take some notes. All right. So Celeste, welcome. This is my little home, the Dr. Allie Griffith Show, I call it. Um, oh, it's so good to be with you. <laughs> it's so good. All right. So first introduce yourself, tell them a little bit about who you are. And um, I could have done it, but I think you would do it so much more juicier. Mm. Hi, everyone. I'm Celeste Mergens, and I am a mom, a wife, a friend, a global advocate, having gratitude everywhere, and the founder and CEO of a global nonprofit called Days for Girls International. We help girls, women, and menstruators have access to menstrual care products and education. Who would have guessed that turns out to be one of the keys to reversing cycles of poverty and violence? And we get to have greater opportunity, dignity, and health. And we've now reached 2.1 million women and girls in 144 countries on six continents. So we speak every week, and I'm a little excited about how we met bc you did that so amazingly how did you even decide to do step into that field in terms for a nonprofit? why did you decide to do that um it's such a perfect example to kind of trust your path i didn't even think of this i was doing honestly something i'd love to do i was directing a writer's conference like writing with a pen that i had founded and and we can talk more about that, but it just basically no longer was the place for me to be. Everything that had worked successfully suddenly wasn't working. It just was really clear that I had to step away now. I didn't want to. I went out kicking and crying and why? And it turned out that if I hadn't walked through that door, I wouldn't have had space in my life to do what came next. And, and that was a dear friend, Andy Clay, invited me to go with her foundation to Kenya. That work became part of my global sustainable community development work. And as a woman who, and long answer to your question, as a woman who survived poverty and being without a home and hunger and things as a child, that issues of solving um, any kind of poverty are really important to me. I was just so grateful for the opportunity. So imagine I'm working on solar and agriculture and education. And then comes the opportunity of helping an orphanage, which I'd been helping for about a year and a half whenever I came to Kenya. Now imagine the day comes that I am called and talking about the great hunger needs that had been happening recently at this orphanage and school. And then the question comes to me, have you asked what the girls are doing for feminine hygiene? I literally went, because ah! I never thought to ask that question. I'd even experienced going without, and I never thought, we just don't think about that. That's something we put in the drawer when we need it, and we just don't talk about it. We don't think about it. And I hadn't asked. I ran to the computer to ask. I didn't expect an immediate answer. It was 2.30 in the morning when this came to me. And I emailed to ask. I got an immediate answer, and the answer was just this, Dr. Ellie. Nothing. They wait in their rooms. I was floored. How do you wait in your rooms, especially with 50 other girls? How do you do that? Turned out that they were sitting on pieces of cardboard for days, just waiting. And that's um, one of the moments that I raised, learned awareness about this. And I would just go on to say that we worked on a solution knowing that if I sent money in the future for pads and they needed food, they would use the money appropriately for food. And so how do you make a solution they can count on month after month? We got there and we did this incredible education and uh, interaction and gave them their kits and they celebrated and they danced with them. And the first girls that came to the door said, thank you so much. Because before you came, we had to let them use us if we wanted to leave the room and go to class. Wow. And I was hoping 
that didn't mean what I feared it meant. But there were another 250 girls to come through. And, and I couldn't even talk right then in the noise from the girls celebrating. I had to say, will you please join me after and please promise to be there and explain more when I can really listen. And they explained they were being sexually exploited in exchange for a single disposable pad. And that was the moment Days for Girls was born. Wow. OMG. Look at the, 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 the process of how life took you there. You didn't even go there for that. And then you awakened into what you really are truly there for. So since you started this, how many girls have been impacted? Tell me a little bit about where they are now. I know it's a whole lot more to go, but let's just celebrate what we have got accomplished. And then we can talk a little bit more about what's next. Yes. So 2.1 million women and girls in 144 wow. countries on six continents. So imagine all the people that came together to do that, all the amazing volunteer supporters, the women in the field, the girls themselves who spoke up in their communities against huge stigma and shame, who stood up about how they were being abused, who have stood up and said, I can't go without, can I share with you a woman, a girl, young girl in India, 16 years old in Agra, India. We're there and a rotary project has come together to make an enterprise. And this is where social entrepreneurs become the thought leaders in their community about menstruation, make Days for Girls washable pads. This is how our pads, patented pad that lasts two to up to reports of five years. They're making these pads that are washable and durable. And then they're selling them locally and having NGOs buy them. And this Rotary Club was founding an enterprise. But the man there, who's a leader in the community, intimidating, like six foot three tall man, who's Indian says, I don't think these people are even using these because it's too much. This is untouchable, this thing. They're probably burying them in the ground after you leave. I don't think they're using them. And this amazing 16-year-old 16 year old girl from India says, excuse me, I use them and I'm going to bring my kit tomorrow so you can see it. She brought her kit that she'd been using two years and showed this is what it still looks like. And you can see you, who does that. Do you know any 16 year old who has that kind of courage? Um, the difference that happens when you know what your body's doing, when you don't have shame about it anymore, when you know that this is a healthy part of being a healthy person, a healthy woman, and you're able to say, um, this is all my body's doing. Without what it's doing right now, you would not even exist. And have that shift and become the leader to change the stigma where you live, that's a whole new place to come from. And confidence of, we get to talk about self-defense and standing up for themselves and their amazing bodies. That's what we're really doing, engaging partners and individuals all over this planet for the day that every girl everywhere, period, has what she needs every month, period. Period. <laughs> and, <laughs> right? And like a lot of things that we do, kind of tackle behind the actual period and, and the, the pad and the process. And it's great that you do have a kit so that they have a place that they can use one thing and it's central for what they can use repeatedly. It's not just a one and done and then you disappear, but it lasts with them over time. But you know, growing up as a young girl, many of us that are listening, we, we go through these periods and it does take a toll on our confidence. And, and especially in where they have to do different things to have access to that. So I wanna celebrate you for just being bold and, and, and taking such initiative and for those that have supported you on your path. Now, it's got to be something weird. How do you come back to your family and say, okay, guys, this is what I'm going to do? Like, what was their approach? Because this show really is about helping women to step out of their fear of not starting their own thing, not knowing what's their own thing. And women, men, I know I have men listeners and watchers also, but um, but the ones who are question, questioning, this is just kind of unorthodox, but somehow I'm, I'm getting a pull. I'm getting a message that I should be doing this. I tend to gravitate towards unorthodox people with unorthodox ideas. How do you <laughs> You know, honestly, who puts on their list what, what you want to be when you grow up? I, I would like to be a global expert in sex and menstruation. You know, and I, it wasn't on my list. <laughs> and, and we honestly, it's taboo everywhere. 
um, even here, I people don't want to talk about it. We'd rather honestly talk about diarrhea than menstruation. Two words you probably never thought you'd have on your show. And, and yet, it's basic to all of us. Either you're someone that menstruates or you're the child or, or partner or uh, of someone that menstruates. It's connecting to us all. And our refusal to just normalize it and just talk about it has meant that people carry stigma and shame and consequences as tremendous on the on one side of the scale as being untouchable and not being able to be with your family waiting in a shed in parts of Western Nepal, in parts of uh, Pakistan, in parts of India. If you, just because it's something basic to your biology and because it's associated with blood and looks like blood, you. Everything they associate with blood is injury and illness. So there's a natural alarm about it. And to be able to shift something, here's what I feel about your Ellie. There's so many things that are hard to change in our world. This isn't one of them. This is something we can change in our lifetime. Our generations can say, that's it. We're erasing the stigma and shame. Nobody should be held out back because of part of biology. This one we can do let's call it done. And it's just education, resources, scale. And part of that for us is local leadership and all of us just call in it. Let's call it done. Oh man, I love it. It's, it's, a, um, it's a movement, right? It goes beyond you. As a lot of us are listening right now and a lot of us, I know this is really tapping into some of our listeners because this isn't a conversation that I have often. Like you said, it's not something I planned. I'm getting all these unique I, um, subject matter, but you know what? I trust God and I trust whatever he sends means that there's someone out there that needs to hear this. And I definitely will have access in our show notes to how if they're interested in joining and supporting and learning what can they do to, to help this mission, especially women, right? Moms, people mm -hmm. who have we all go through it. If not, we have to explain it to our kids and part of the explaining it to our girls. I mean, I have a son, but I've also worked in the school system. I've worked in education. I've worked with girls and just having conversations about taboo things, quote unquote taboo things and normalizing it so that um, self-confidence and self-esteem and, and other, other things that happens as a result of not, not normalizing it, it just shows up. And because we're not speaking about it, it gets hidden mm -hmm. and hidden and hidden. I want to celebrate you for bringing this out today and just having this conversation um, a little on the, the the inside scoop since I did tell them I was going to let them into our our um, it's like behind our red our green I was going to say red curtains so it's like red curtains. <laughs> hey behind our curtains um, tell them a little bit about how we met what was so cool about how we met. Oh, we're, we're in the BC collaborative um, community, and it's been so great to connect. And um, you and I are champion note takers in that group. Both of us, like, as you know, you won champion of the whole, you know, group um, for noting what, grabbing the juice of what's being said in the conversation. And I think that brought us together because life really is about grabbing the juice like is it's really about paying attention to what's working, being grateful and grinding and leaning into the places that you see connection. It really is all about connection and really leaning in where you go so that your work and your life isn't a weight you're dragging, but a sail that lifts you because you're just leaning in where it's like, ooh, I want to know more about that. And, and that um, you're just a person that when you meet you, you're like, oh, I, I want to talk more with her. So we're fellow note takers and juicers. Isn't that cute? We're, we're fellow note takers. Like who would, okay. So we were in a program together. We were doing it together. And I don't know if you guys know this. And, and, I, and if I've done a program with you, whenever I'm there, I tend to take notes because it's, it's the easiest way for me to process things. Like I have to say it back to myself and I have to simplify complicatedness, right? So when things are super complicated, I got to, okay, what are the three things I need to know? And I will just always write the, the main points, the bullet. I'm a bullet point girl. So mm -hmm. as then I started to realize that many people get lost in the sauce. Like when there's so much going on in front, in, in front of them, they're not sure of what to pull out. And, and because of that, 
they get left behind and or information that's really, really juicy, they may focus on the things that are not. So mm -hmm. at first I question myself a lot, and this is how I'm talking about something that we question ourselves because it's not really on our list of things that we do super well. It's not our skill, it's not my degree. It has nothing to do with that. It's just the mere fact of knowing that if I could make it easier for someone else, and if I can make it easier for myself, then have the confidence to do it. Now, before I did it, but I did it for myself and I wouldn't do it for others. And I would say, oh, what they think, is she Miss Goody Two Shoes or whatever negative chatter would show up in my head. So when I saw her doing it, I was like, oh my gosh, yay, it's someone else this whole that's doing it also. <laughs> so I and, and and I just it was nice, you know, when she when she could stop, I would pop in when I when I had to stop out because I was doing it in, in the midst of doing 50 million other things, as you guys always know. So you never know the people you're going to meet in life and how God will cross you cross your paths. And we since then we said, well, we need to stay in touch. We're not sure why. But we know we need to stay in touch. I mean, she she does have family with autism, um, and we had that little conversation about that. Uh, so we do have little things in common. But we just kept saying, how about we keep meeting every week or every other week and just hold each other accountable and just 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 share and talk. So we would meet for half an hour, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, I was, how about I do a podcast interview? I feel like people need to be on the inside of our conversations because it's so juicy. Mm -hmm. It really is. And we should probably explain where we're putting the notes, Dr. Ali. We're putting them in the chat. So, you know, when you're on a Zoom meeting and there's that chat box and people are, are making answers, we're putting like the juicy quotes from what we just heard there. Um, that's where we're putting our notes in case you were wondering. <laughs> and I tend to do Pretty sure you're similar. I tend to do it even when I'm on lives. Like um, when I first was with uh, Lisa Nichols, and that's pretty much how she remembered me. Actually, was when she used to do these lives. She's come on, and while she's talking, I'm writing notes. Right. So she says it's not a monologue; it's a dialogue. Right. So it's a way of having people engage with you. And I do it now, even when I'm teaching classes. I tend to ask questions so that people can answer back. And if they can't answer verbally, then type it down because that still counts as communication. Mm -hmm. um, so I started doing it with her and she would just go, yeah, you know what Dr. Ali wrote. And what, because she started saying it was helpful. So as you're out there and you're thinking about, you know, the unique things that you do, uh, don't be afraid. Don't let fear stand in your way. Embrace the little quirks that you have about yourself and just know that someone will appreciate those little things. Mm -hmm. It's really true. Who would have guessed our fellow note taking would be one so helpful to the group that Dr. Ellie won an award for it, and um, but also bringing people together. Absolutely. And I didn't even know I won an award. <laughs> She's so cute. She goes, like, "You won." I'm like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> Oh man, the joys of life. Okay, so what's next for you? What's happening out there? How can we best support you who are, you know, our listeners? And, you know, I do believe God does not make any mistakes. This is for a reason. Um, what, what's coming into your spirit of why you think that we are aligned to do this today? Um, exactly. I'll tell you where Days for Girls is and also maybe share some of the things you and I have been talking about. But briefly, for Days for Girls right now, we are scaling. At the end of the year, when COVID was closing a lot of people down, we reached over 200,000 women and girls in just two and a half months, right? So, so imagine now adding more resources, more thought leaders sharing what we're doing, more awareness. We can just reach, there are 500 million women and girls who have need of menstrual products, according to the World Health Organization, 500 million. So even though 2.1 is a lot, we have to scale this and more organizations join in. So if you know someone, if you know someone who's looking for a philanthropic way to make a difference in this world, connect with them. If you know someone who wants to talk about it, you just go to our social media and, and share um, and share what Dr. Ali has shared about it. That will make a huge difference. We're looking for champions and thought partners to share with. So reach out to me if that feels like a match. The other thing that I think for me is showing up so clearly that will make it go. Sorry. Handle quickly, just say, I'm just going to write it in the bottom. So, what is your social media handle for those that are listening? Oh, thank you. It is at Days for Girls 
that's it. So days of the week, because we give them days back to in their life, and then four F O R girls G I R of us. Awesome. Go ahead now. <laughs> I just like to have that there for them. Go ahead. Thank you. Listen. Yeah, that that will be huge. That's the way we'll scale and reach even more and continue that pace of growth. Uh, because there's a lot of people to reach and together we can do that I'm completely confident to me that brings us to something that we've been talking about that surety I know in my bones that we already reached every girl I brought period that we already us together shifted this on our planet I know it just like I know my birthday is coming up in April right I we're it's we just have to walk to that day do the work do the connections. And I'm literally already joyful about the people I meet along the way that will be part of it. So, so before I met you, Dr. Ali, I was expecting amazing you to show up. I didn't know what your face looked like yet. I didn't know, but I knew I'd be meeting amazing people like you and was already excited about it. And I think that when you're building a movement, you have to trust and be excited about your journey, even when doors slam in your face, like the Writers Association having to step away from that painfully, you know, I, that was seemed like such a bad thing that it opened the door for something else. But you also, I'm finding in my journey at this point that you just have to claim what's coming. You have to absolutely be sure if something's looking really wonky in your life and someone just did something that mixed your life up and looked really plain and painful that you have enough confidence to go now, that's not how things go in my life. In my life, and in my case, it's things go smoothly and flow. So either I'm in the right place at the wrong time, or I'm in the wrong place at the right time, or this is part of my past. So welcome. What can I learn about this? And just really be clear and claim it. We're reaching every girl everywhere, period. I am welcoming the people that will be part of that journey, because together we're going to shift this on our planet forever. Let's just call that one together and who wants to be part of that changing and then what else do we want to claim together and be as open to others so that's our sharing for me Dr. Ali it's for me that mastermind time to play I'm claiming this what are you claiming let's claim it together I love that you help mothers step up in their fullness I love that you help normalize the amazing gifts people with autism have for us and how to interact in a way that lifts them to their fullest and helps them engage and give their gifts to our communities. I love that you do that. I'm all in. And whatever vision you want to call for, this is how the future looks like in your walk. And just claim it and also be open to, there might be closed doors. It may shift you down a path you never saw coming. But even in that, we'll be grateful. That's, that's I think, what led you to the invitation. Like, let's, let's just claim it, all of us. We can claim it. I love it. Claim it, period. <laughs> I love the periods behind it. And yeah, that's exactly what gravitated us towards each other. Our boldness, the fact that we're there to support, support each other through the process. The fact that even though it gets scary, scary at moments, it gets scary for all of us. And things do show up that makes us question, you know, mm -hmm. we, we come in. And we, we know, like we know, like we know that this is for a reason and that I'm going to claim my part, my path in this. And, and last week I spoke about, you know, I'm here to help a hundred women. And she was like, well, wait a minute, why is your number so low? And I'm like, because you know, I need to are gentle you know I've, I've, I've probably helped over a hundred a thousand of people already but of course i'm talking about hands-on and, and being more intimate with them and she was like no i think we need to go bigger and she was just throwing these numbers out. we're gonna help a million women we're gonna go we're gonna extend ourselves and i'm just like you know what you're people i need to be around so when i start mm -hmm. to question myself and and and, and you guys are, are listening to this because i question myself too that you have people around you to just remind you of your greatness so thank you. I appreciate you for reminding me of my greatness. And thank you for just showing up for those out there. Guys, this was just a little bit behind the scenes of our conversation. Um, you know, I always like to ask this question. So um, leave us with that golden nugget that you know you were, you were placed here right now for that listener that's listening to this right now. What do you think? And I think you just said it. But just in case there's something else, or just in case you want to land on that again, what do you think is their purpose for being here at this moment, at this time, listening to you? 
Mm, I'm so glad they'll potentially feel drawn to our movement as well. And I would hope they leave feeling sure that they can create and claim their own vision and be open and not feeling blown away if something happens that they didn't expect, but lean into it. And I would say one other thing that you and I have talked about, I sneaked in three, did you see that? Not just one. One other thing that you and I have talked about is regarding you know, the number, it takes just as much work to do a few as it does to apply that and scale for many. It's the same amount of work. If we chose to reach a few thousand, the years would have clicked by, that, or if we find ways to scale that, that applies to everything. It's, it's just as much work to go for something small as it is to go for something that is a fullness of what you see as possible. So why not go for it? Ooh, why not go for it? That's the message, y'all. Well, you know, as always, it was, it was an honor having you. And for those that spent their time, make sure you pass this message out. Make sure you pass this along. Make sure you binge listen and listen to, listen to or watch something else that we have. Um, amazing season. It's just an amazing season of greatness that is being sent and aligned with our messages for this season. Um, I want to thank you. Continue to be amazing in your thoughts, in your words, and in your actions. Until next time, y'all. Peace.